Rosa Parks didn't refuse to give up her bus seat because she was in a spectacular mood or because she had an exceptionally rare gift for standing up to people or because she possessed a superhuman level of fearlessness. She didn't refuse to give up because she felt called by God to pick that particular seat on that particular day or because she knew ahead of time that everything was going to turn out okay or because she felt like it was a convenient time to rebel. Rosa Parks refused to give up her bus seat because she was tired. An entire nation was transformed because a woman got tired. In your quest for inspiration, I'd like to encourage you to never underestimate the power of your frustration. Instead of forcing yourself to feel inspired, maybe it's simply time that you get tired. Now let's be clear, Rosa Parks was not tired of standing. She was tired of staying in a place that was assigned to her by others. In her own words, she says, people say, I didn't give up my seat because I was tired. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. This world could use a few more people like Rosa Parks. People who have the audacity to get fired up. People that have the nerve to get sick and tired of the same old rules and the same old life. Because being a positive force for change has nothing to do with naively smiling at everything that happens as if the goal of life is to win points for how cheerful you look. It's not about blindly obeying guru speak about how unenlightened we are for getting a little mad from time to time. The problem with our world is not that people are too angry or too tired or too frustrated. No, the problem is we're not angry, tired and frustrated enough to actually do anything to make changes in our own lives. We're angry enough to criticize, but not angry enough to create. We're tired enough to give up, but not tired enough to give a good fight. Oh, we're fed up enough to bemoan our limitations, but not enough to battle for our possibilities. We're mad enough to pout, but not mad enough to push back. You see, our feelings of dissatisfaction and frustration are not the problem. It's what we choose to do with them. All of our emotions are part of the creative process. So instead of trying to purify yourself of anger, consider the possibility of channeling that energy into productive action. There's a Mike Murdoch quote I love that says, the things that tick you off the most are your biggest clue to the very things you were born to change. We all get frustrated sometimes and that's okay. But those feelings, when they get bottled up and suppressed, they corrupt the soul, so you've got to let them out. But don't lash out against your family and your friends. Don't take out your frustration on your classmates or your coworkers or your Uber driver. Instead, direct that energy towards achieving your goals. Because when you do that, it becomes a powerful, constructive force. I want you to think of anger like fire. Fire is this powerful, seemingly uncontrollable force that's capable of destroying an entire city. And yet that same energy is capable of bringing warmth to an entire community. The same fire that can burn down a house can also cook a meal. Like the forces of nature, your emotional energy can flow in more than one direction. It's capable of serving more than one purpose. So the next time your emotional fires get stoked, I want you to see that as an opportunity to harness creative energy. Just as you might take a burning candle and use that to light a dead candle, actively seek out ways to transfer the fires of your frustration to those areas of your life that need to be ignited. We're not left to simply choose between resenting our emotions or being stuck with them. Our so-called negative emotions can be our greatest allies when we learn to work with them and not against them. 
So, are you angry? Are you already angry? Good. What are you going to do about it?